Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on the country you are listening to me from. It's not always a joy, but an honor to serve my people, eager members of course, sons and daughters of Africa and humanity at large. Great is thy faithfulness. Every morning, a new message we see, I see in my world in Ontario, Canada. Today is Tuesday, May 3rd, 2022. My world is always full of joyous activities, unbroken progress, and great expectancy. I live my life from within to the without. I am in the world, but I am not of the world at all. I work with my intuitions only, and that is a still small voice of God. I am a lady of gratitude, so let the whole world, let the whole world join me to say, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Infinite Intelligence. My motherland, Africa, is no longer a dark continent, but a continent full of enlightened minds. We have found the truth and we practice the truth in every nook and corner of our lives. It is wonderful and amazing. One of the cardinal principles at EMG is that we can of ourselves do nothing, but it is the yang and the yang, the mother father within, that does it all through us and we say and we declare, thank you father, thank you infinite intelligence. Philippians 2.13 for it will also says, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his own good pleasure. Oh, wow. Philippians 2.13. I love this prayer by Glenn Clark, and I would love to read it to all my listeners. It says, for thou art the God of love, giver of every good and perfect gift, and there's none besides thee. Thou art omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent in all, through all and over all the holy God, and thine is thy kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Glenn Clark. Oh, wow. So today's topic, my people, today's topic is in two parts, where we'll talk about the existence of EMG and our objectives. What are we doing? And EMG simply stands for Eagle Mentality Group. We are raising a critical mass. So Eagle Mentality Group, yeah. What are we doing and where are we going? What is our destination? We've been in operation for over five years now. We were communicating mainly on our website and our WhatsApp messages. We believe in the universal law of growth. That's we've added another layer, which is our podcast messages. It's a means of reaching to a wider audience where we've been delivering our message since March 2022. We'll be talking about the universal laws and principles and the subconscious mind, which is all based on the power of thought. As we've been always emphasizing, God is taught whether you will agree with us or not, or you'll agree with me or not. God is taught because God never created heaven and earth with his bare hands, but he taught it to be, into being. As a child, I always knew this. If God created heaven and earth with his bare hands, where did he start his work and where did he end it? So God is taught. You are taught being too that you should be on the creative plane, but not on the competitive plane at all. You should be on the creative plane to create your own originality, originality with your own signature under it, but not on the competitive plane. Being on the competitive plane brings about fear, selfishness, doubt, worry, and all sorts of negative emotions. And I call it mental impurities, whatever you want to call it. Be a thought being too. And that makes you a co-creator with God. And so when you're a co-creator with God, you think things or ideas into existence. That is when you can boldly say, you and the Father are one. This is your divine or birthright to discover. It is not a privilege at all, but the African child wasn't taught that. So it might be new to you or you, but the fact that it's new to you, that doesn't mean it has been in existence since time immemorial. Okay, so in the course of the week, we'll be discussing the subconscious mind too in details. Most of the time, you hear us saying it, what is it, what it can do, and a whole lot. So please be coming online as you've always been and be following us as you've always been because we'll be talking about these topics in details, uh -huh, these words in details. And today, I'm not only happy, but I'm very much happy to introduce Egil Imano Mensa who is also my husband, my spiritual partner, and my custom made from the universe. And everything, he's everything to me. And he'll give us the reasons for existence 
as an as a group and after we will also talk about the divine law of oneness and i also introduce the divine laws later and i also talk about our dream so um i now hand over to my dear husband who is my custom made husband Egel Emmanuel Mensa to speak to the world Egel Emmanuel thank yeah. you thank you my unbreakable and unfailing rape for this wonderful introduction and exposition and it is not just a joy but it is an honor to speak to you my fellow Africans about what God has chosen us to do on the African continent and in the diaspora in the lives of the black race or the black people um, for a very long time Africans, wherever we find ourselves, we have been yearning and praying and dreaming for a, 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 a freedom. But this freedom is like we are chasing the wind. Anything that we do appears to be the highway. The results we get appears to be the opposite. So it is as part of this yearning that God laid this um, calling on my heart and that of my wife. And that is how eagle mentality was discovered. We discovered the power of the subconscious mind. And after reading through it and practicing the principles and seeing how this part of us, of ours, has been used by other people to bring themselves up, it became a, a burden and it became a, 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 a burden and a message put into our mouths to be brought to the people of Africa. So today, um, I am going to talk to you about the overall objectives of eagle mentality. So eagle mentality, we operate on based on the subconscious mind principles and universal laws and principles. And also, we believe that all human beings are the individualizations, and, uh, and therefore we are all individualization of God, and therefore we are all spirits. We are all spiritual beings. So uh, EMG came about and the mission or the purpose for which we, we are in existence is, or I will caption that the, men, the big mental picture, our big mental picture for Africa, all of us at EMG is the dream that has been placed on our hearts as the co-founders of EMGs to liberate the African continent from mental bondage. As observed by Marcus Gavi, we are going to emancipate ourselves from mental slavery because whilst others might free the body, none but ourselves can free the mind. Mind is your only ruler, sovereign. The man who is not able to develop and use his mind is bound to be the slave of the other man who uses his mind. These are the words of a son of Africa, Marcus Gavi, even though he found himself in a diaspora. And we believe that all our brothers and sisters in diaspora and all of us on the continent are one. And that this is the time that we begin to build uh, bridges rather than burning the bridges. So the number one objective or goal of EMG is the creation of a diverse and a multiracial Africa. The creation of a diverse and a multiracial Africa. And some of us that have traveled to this part of the world, and if you uh, observe, or if you are very observant and you are really in tune with what God is doing, you realize that this is a place that God can actually be found. If you come to Canada in particular, where we are, U.S. and the United Kingdom, Germany, there are, you see almost every, every group of people, every race, living side by side in peace. And we're working together every day. The efforts of their leaders, their government, is to bring all of us together to live in peace and harmony. And that is God actually being shown on the outer through his images and the likeness. So that is the first objective. The second objective is... Uh, the existence of the new Africa based on the universal laws and subconscious man principle. 
we are creating a new Africa. An Africa where sons and daughters or children of the black race would no longer look at things from the perspective that we've been doing for all these years that has brought us to where we are. But we are now looking for an Africa that sons and daughters are able to look with it uh, for power from within and look at the challenges that we are facing and face them square on and come up with solutions. So the new Africa is based on universal laws and principles, which the subconscious mind's principles are part of. Then the third one is an Africa that prides itself in inventions, innovations, and making the contribution in the area of technological and scientific advancement. So people, uh, the Bible says that those who knows their Lord or their, yeah, their Lord will do exploit in the land. And those who know the laws of the, the, the meaning of this biblical verse is that those who know the meaning or who knows the laws and apply them, they do the exploit. Those who are doing the exploit in the line are those who are giving us higher level technology. So we are creating an Africa based on universal laws and principles for us to raise ourselves, to raise our Africa to a level that we rub shoulders with other people, other races other nations in the level of technology and we are not competing but we are all contributing to the development of the human race or humanity and that is how god wants it we are all evolving africa it is time for the africa to take the center stage in the evolutionary process of the of humanity yeah and then we also want an africa that stands alone an africa that stands alone if you look at what is happening now there is no day, there is no minute, there is no hour that Africans will not seek help from people that they consider to be powerful than them. Right from our leader to the, the, the lowest person in our countries on the continent. But we will become, well, we will be able to look for power within ourselves. And once we are able to connect with our powers, we are able to stand alone and do things as people whom God is actually working through. The stand alone is something that we are looking for. Africa to be completely independent of any other people, but we are only co-workers, co-creators with other nations and uh, races to, for the development of the world. Yeah. And the next one is an African that rises to face challenges through persistence and determination by the use of the inner powers to transmute the challenges into opportunities. If you look at Africa, anything that falls on the ground, we cry, hey, we need help. We're begging, we need this, we need that. No, this is not how the world is run. The world is run based on the principle that God is running through you, God is with you, whatever you are. And your difficulties are invitation from the universe for you to rise, to become to overcome them, the overcoming is you getting a solution to the problem, and the solution becomes a freedom, it becomes a promised land to the people, to the whole world. And that is what we are talking about, an Africa that looks at the, our challenges as opportunities, and then we, we transform these opportunities, we transform these challenges into opportunities, and the opportunities are the solutions that we are bringing to the world. And then we have an Africa that citizens believe that they are created in the images and the likeness of God to do exploit, but not to feel they have been shortchanged in life. And uh, we speak to a lot of people based on the job we do, and some of, especially the younger generation, most of them actually confesses that the Africa is next to hell. And that is the perspective of Africans, both old and young, that we are living in hell. Yes, we are living in hell because we are not using our God-given powers. And therefore, eagle mentality is here to awaken or to create the awareness and to awaken every African to his indwelling powers, the powers that God has given to every human being at birth. And that is the power of the subconscious mind. Every man or woman has it. Every man or woman is given, to, is given this gift free from God. And this is the knowledge, this is the power, this is the understanding that all the people that we consider to be great and are de and developed knew and they use it and to develop their land. And this is the time 
Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and uh, Martin Luther King, Marcus Gavi in particular, he spoke extensively about the development of the African mind. And uh, Bob Marley sang it. All these great men of Africa that lived and spoke about the African development, their job is what an unfinished business. And the finishing part is what we've we have we've started at Eagle Mentality. And therefore, we are calling on every African that the time has this is the time, the time has come, the hour has come for us to rise to face our difficulties and challenges. And as we face them, we overcome them, we dominate them, and then we become masters, and then we can also present our own solutions to the world and that is when the world will begin to celebrate and rejoice that yes africa has taken its rightful place the africa that the world has been yearning for the world will dance to celebrate to welcome it at the center stage of the human development wonderful thank you wonderful i love your explanation i think mm -hmm. my husband has said it all can you explain so today We'll be talking of um, divine law of oneness. Okay, so can you explain to us what the divine law of oneness is? Okay, again, thank you very much, mm -hmm. my dear wife. My unfailing on an unbreakable rape. Yeah. So uh, your question or your what you want me to do is in the in is, is in its right order, and as we have. I have already mentioned or we've stated those who are all our members and people who are not in the eagle mentality group on our platform but follow us on facebook and other platform everyone knows that we speak about the universal laws and the subconscious mind and the universal laws so we want to take this opportunity to explain to begin to explain these laws in details to every one of you the the the, the determination and the whole idea is that you become knowledgeable in this, not in academics, but you taking it and practicing it in every nook and corner of your life. And then all of us put together, it means Africa is practicing the universal law in every nook and corner of our lives. So the universal law of divine oneness, it simply says that we are all, con everything in this world or in the universe is connected to each one another. We are all connected with one another. Though you may see yourself standing alone, you may see the tree standing alone, but that is only the material things that we say. But in the spiritual world, we are all connected to one another. But let us also let me take this opportunity to remind you is that the material world is the manifestation of the spiritual world. And therefore, where we come from, the source of everything is spirit and that is god some people call uh, the, the spirit allah some people call it different whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter but even people who doesn't even believe in religion we, they call it energy you don't it doesn't really matter but this is this particular spirit or energy is the source of everything and that is where we all come from and since we all come from one source we all come from one place we are all linked to the same source and therefore, your brother, your sister, whether it's, uh, so the person is uh, uh, European, Asian, or whatever, is black or white, or whatever color that you see the person to be, the person is not different from you. Because within the spirit, we are all one. And let me just give you a simple explanation, which will explain the law of divine oneness. Every human being, regardless of our color, regardless of what we consider ourselves to be, the president, the cleaner, the kayayo in Ghana, once we have people who carry things. All these people, everyone, regardless, the, the white, the Asians, or whatever, we all do one common thing. And that is to sleep. There is not any kind of sleep for people, the president, that he enjoys is that all other people have a different sleep. The same thing. Uh, uh, the, the, the sleep that the president enjoys is the same sleep that any other person enjoys. And that tells us that we are one, accessing all these elements, all these unseen things as one body. We are all thinking into one mind. We are all thinking into one mind and we are all breathing into the same body of air and that is God. 
So since we are all connected from that point, we are all one. We are all one. And so if you come to this part of the world, you see that they have the agenda of multiculturalism, multiracialism. So if you look, that is why one of what objective is what? To create a diverse Africa. The world is moving to become a one, one race. And it's based on the law of divine oneness. If you go to the United States and you read the Independent Declaration, it is boldly stated that all men and women are born equal. We are all the same. That is based, this, this statement was taken from the law of divine oneness. So looking at all these things here, you see that any group of people that are living that no one is coming to live amongst them to also contribute to this human evolution. Then the people are behind. So if you look at the world, Africa is holding human evolution backwards. We are, we are holding the human evolution. We are stalling the wheels. And this is the time we get up. That we all become awakened to this fact that there is a law called divine oneness. The law of divine oneness. And when we begin to look at every human being as one, then we, don't, we will not condemn. We will not judge. We will not look at past things to judge people. We will not look at past things to condemn people. But we will accept all of us together that we are one. And therefore... We are from the same source. So, in short, that is how I can just parcel this. Uh, it's a whole lot of but I, I have tried my best to give this overview. And I'll hand over to you. And thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Um, we, we understood all that you said. Thank and you. Um, we are grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you kindly, Mr. Mensa. Mensa. My custom made husband. Okay, so my husband, Igor Limano Mensah, has said it all. As children of God and citizens of the universe, we teach and emphasize on divine oneness. Divine oneness is all that there is, but not separated at all. As our dream is, we envision a diverse Africa, a multiracial Africa, as my husband already said. An Africa where sons and daughters of the black race, the white race, and the Asian race live side by side and enjoy in love and brotherhood. Africa is only inhabited by only black people. It is about time the African man or woman rise up to take at the center stage of our affairs and build a continent and invite all to come and taste of uh, uh, taste the goodness of God in our lives and taste of the handiworks of sons and daughters of Africa. As he said, we are stalling the evolution process back and it is not good it doesn't depict the presence of god if you walk on the african continent you see only black people and that is not how that is not how god created it the strength of a nation the strength of a continent is in their diversity but on the african continent it's all black people but before we do that we have to heal from the past we acknowledge that as africans we've gone through so much a painful and expectative pain but the law of polarity, which is a universal law of yeah, universal law of polarity says the more we concentrate on what we don't want, the more we create on what we don't want. So it is about time to flip and focus on what we want. It's time to learn about the universal laws and principles that create our realities in life. Okay? So we have to learn about the universal law of polarity and reprogram our subconscious mind and forgive. In that way, good will come to us. And most of the time, when people hear of our dream, they doubt it or they say it will take a long time to achieve. Oh, this is a huge dream. Whatever people say, we consciously and responsibly choose not to allow people's thoughts to be ours. We transmute every negativity into opportunity. This has been our mindset for five years now. We don't allow people's thoughts to be ours at all. We always say, it is not what people say or do that is the problem, but our reaction is the key. I remember what somebody said five years ago. We didn't listen to the person at all. Today, here we are. So we always say, when the kind of mind says it cannot be done, or your dream will take long to achieve, or talk in the negativity, the mind with a vivid, clear, and exact imagination says, it's already done. Because you know why? It's already done. We see it in our imagination because we were created in the image and likeness of God. 
And moreover, it is not me doing the work or my husband doing the work or you even doing the work or anyone, but it is God that is working through all of us to accomplish his own good pleasure. And who can stop God? Who, who at all can stop God? I've always asked people a look, this question. When God gave us a, the dream or God gave us that purpose, you are not standing there. So you are talking of what you don't know. So we just allow people to be and express themselves. But um, it is not them at all. It is God who is doing, working through all of us to accomplish his own good pleasure. So and let me talk to you about introduction of the uh, the universal laws and principles. Why it's so important for you to know about universal laws and principles. Um, we'll be concentrating on 30. There are so many of them, but they are interwoven, they are interconnected. But we'll be concentrating about 12, 13 of them in the in the next few weeks. We'll be talking about them. Um, you, and why is this so important? Universal laws, let, please listen to what I'm saying. Universal laws and principles are not barriers to prevent one from living a prosperous and a good life at all. They are structures and guidelines to help one to be God-realized in order to live in God's opulence and to be a perfect peace with ourselves, everyone, and the world at large. The physical laws, rules, and guidelines we have in our schools, workplaces, communities are the extension of universal laws to bring peace and order. Knowledge and understanding and obedience to universal laws keeps the mind calm and focused and inter inter uh, on the interconnection of all things. The universe has no favorites. As the most eager members have heard have said it all the time, the universe has no favorites or does not play human favoritism with anyone. So many people say God is law and I believe that. It is just a gift to everyone according to his or her rightful earnings. James Allen, he taught us that, the British philosopher. The universe has no favorites at all. So total obedience and compliance is a key to manifestation. A lot of people do want to manifest, but they don't want to obey. It cannot happen. Total obedience and compliance is a key to manifestation. The universe is a place of perfect law, order, exact, and perfect beauty. There has never been an occurrence in human history that the things within the universe are clashing or in a state of confusion that it needs experts on earth to sort it out. It has never happened, and it can never happen, and it will never happen. So living within universal laws frees an individual and the majority from all kinds of ignorance, stupidity, servitude, limitations, and bondage. The understanding and knowledge of universal laws enlightens the individual to see that the universe is a place of plenty, abundance, but not of scarcity or lack or scarcity, whichever way you want to pronounce it. There's more than enough to go around for everyone, just the way no one struggles to breathe air in and out. Without these laws and principles, life would be on a trial and error basis. Everything would be in a total confusion and in a mess all the time. As a matter of fact, if an individual or group of people chooses to live outside the universal laws and principles, that individual or group of people will battle with life endlessly, hopelessly and haplessly. Sometimes they will do well, sometimes they won't. However, these individuals will continue to blame God and everything, including blame God and every, everyone. They will ignorantly quarrel with themselves, the world, and engage in what is termed as fighting against circumstances all the time. The danger is this individual or group of people doesn't realize that all they are doing is built from within them. Universal laws and principles teach one to take responsibility and accountability for his or her own thoughts, words, actions, and feelings. If one understands that, one will trace everything to him or herself and will not blame the devil, witches, wizards, and all sorts. That individual will realize that he or she is part of the, whatever the problem is. Hence, he or she should be willing to be part of the solution too. The higher truth of life is that change begins from within or from oneself. That the solution lies in nowhere than in the problem. Present day teaching keeps humanity tied to the physical and outer world. Humanity be must begin to explore the reality beyond the physical or or third dimensional world and begin to communicate with the higher self for inner guidance and power. The next stage of evolution is the mind. 
That is why we keep on saying, mind is the master and mind rules the world. Everyone is to discover him or herself or to identify his or her purpose in life. The soul is bigger than the personality. The entire human life is not about what one thinks or perceives things should be or what we think things should be. I told a group of people the other time, and I'm repeating it. It is not about how we think things should be or how we perceive things should be or how we want things to be. No! It is about how things are done and how things work in the universe. When I finish talking to you, in the evening, you go outside and look. Everything is in order. Look at nature, the moon, the stars, and look. The trees, the... Oh, you will love it. So, if an individual can bring this in his or her life, I don't know for that individual. So, it is the forces in the unseen or in our world that creates the realities in our outer or physical world. That's it. You either know this truth or you don't know. Believe in it or you don't believe in it. Accept it or don't accept it. It will come as a surprise to most people, if not all, that the angels in the universe are unemployed. Can you imagine? This is so and it's the truth. Simply because many do not know how to connect to the power within, with the power within them, to take their rightful place in the world and to be the men and women God created them to be. They are simply not aware of human uh, the purpose of human existence. The heart and mind must be purified and synchronized without any form of mental impurities and junk before one again one can enjoy all the blessings and the everlasting goodness in the universe. Many want to enjoy their own life and still enjoy the blessings in the universe. I always tell them it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. The ego or lower self must give way completely to the higher self and that brings an individual to the state of androgyny. That is the union of man or woman with the divine. The mental or emotional bodies must be balanced and calm at all, at all times, no matter the difficulty. One must balance the yin and the yang within to a point of stability for the flow of power. In all, one must aspire to bring calmness, settledness, balance or quiet, um, balance and quietness in one's life in order to manifest for the universe. The scripture says the same thing. In returning and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. But you would not. You can find this in Isaiah 30, 15. You would not. Many people add, I call it effort, hard work, jumping, screaming, yelling. Ah, you don't do that when you pray. You have to be calm. And when you are calm, the power of God can just blow through you. Humanity is governed by the universal law of causation. All is all. All is thought. All is mind. All is law and order in the universe. This is so and it is the truth. Nothing escapes this. It's a universal law. It is universal laws and principles that create a realities of life. The universe is not only good, but very good to individuals. The universe is not only good, but very good to, indi to the individual. Who is prepared to change his or her thought? God is taught. Out of thought comes light, and out of light comes manifestation. Sometimes when I see and hear my people venting, agitating, engaging in all kinds of negativity, I take a deep breath and I hmm. And I say to myself, my people, they don't know who they truly are. And my black man listening to me, or woman or lovely eagle listening to me, if you don't know who you truly are, you cannot be the man or woman you were born to be. You will engage in what is called fighting against circumstances or quarreling with the world as if the world owes you something. Meanwhile, the world owes you nothing. Nothing at all, my grandpa or my grandma, sister or brother, uncle fellow black man or woman you will feel the world is against you all the time the world is not against you at all it is you this is the hard truth you must accept you will feel the world is against you all the time but the world is not against you all that uh, at all it is you you don't have an understanding of life the truth is the more you quarrel with the world the more you create in your life what you don't want i always ask people so what are they going to do after being exposed to the truth and it's the same question I'm throwing to you too. My duty is to serve you. And I've served you very well. I have no right to force the truth on you. 
that will be taking your dignity and right away from you. You have to make a choice. One thing I can assure you is that each one of us is a product of our choices. And that is what makes us different from animals. I did my work and used the truth to save myself. Scripture says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. That's Mr. and Mrs. Versa. One of our favorite quotes is, the best time to test one faith in God is when everything is against the person and the whole world is crashing or caving on that person, on the, or on the individual. We went through that. You don't know what to do. You don't only exercise faith in God when things are going well. When you have the cars, when you have a lovely home, when everything, the children are doing well, when the business is flourishing. That's when you exercise faith. As a matter of fact, it's when everything seems dark in your life and you don't understand and anything that you give praise to God to activate the hands of God. That is why our favorite quote is, the best time to test one faith in God is when everything is against the person and the whole world is crashing on, the, on you. And Mr. and Mrs. Spencer, we say that the subconscious mind, which is, a God, which is a God's nature in you, comes to you in you in that dying moment of yours or at the wicked point of yours. And it is only the fortunate who finds it. That count yourself fortunate. The subconscious mind is based on practical faith. Practical faith. We found it. We found it at that time. In that darkest moment. And what is faith? Faith is a, the, the scripture says faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, calling forth things that are not as if they were. So, therefore, you are calling things you want from the inner thought world or the fifth dimensional world to the external physical or outer world or the third dimensional world we live in. So, you, you, you are just ima imagining or imagining what you want from the inner to the outer world. And it's wonderful when you understand it and when you do it that way. On our spiritual journey, we went through so much in our homelessness of almost four years. Our three jewels were taken into foster home in the midst of COVID-19. We went through denials, rejection, evictions upon eviction, prosecution, persecution, hunger, and all. To be a homeless mother in a developed country is not easy. In all, we had an understanding of life. The understanding of life was that we thank God for the difficulties because it could have been worse. Our self-talk was if we could handle it. We could handle it. And we handled everything, my husband and I. So you can also handle everything that comes your way, which is unbearable. You can also handle everything. We handle it with the truth. So you can also handle it. And I think 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says it, that you cannot be tempted about what you cannot bear. And that temptation is not to hurt you. It is not to harm you. It is not to punish you. But it's for you to learn. It is God seeking expression through you. Now we know that out of pain, the purpose is found. So all the, the terrible experiences we went through happened for us, but not to us. That the glory of God will be seen in our lives. Had it not been those excruciating pain and terrible experiences, how could we have self-realized? How could we have self-realized? How could we have been better versions of ourselves? This truth the African child wasn't taught and doesn't know up until now. That's the African child goes up into adulthood and is lopsided, one-sided, and as clueless all the time, calling on people for help. And there are some others too who make themselves so important and judge others. They should know that the loss of cause and effect is real. Also known as action and reaction. You reap what you sow. So those men and women of God who make themselves so important and judge people and punish people, no, you can do that when you know about universal laws and principles because the Bible even says it, that vengeance is not yours. So you have no right to judge anyone. You have no right to judge anyone. Use discretion in dealing with people and give the people the truth because if you don't give the people the truth, very soon they will run away and you'll be left alone. Give the people the truth. And the truth is, out of pain, the purpose is found. Our challenges, our troubles, our Whatever pain that we go through, it is not to punish us. It is God seeking expression to us. So, for you that you are saying, it is witches, it is wizards, it is this and that, I don't know what you are saying. Please change the message and learn about universal laws and principles.
up until now, some of the Eagle members still don't believe we were homeless in a developed world. But the question is, why would we lie about something like that? The fact is that we weren't going to stop following our purpose by serving our people, sons and daughters of Africa and humanity at large, on our spiritual journey. We were prepared to suffer any consequences. Our minds were made up. George Bernard Shaw, I love his quote. He said, the more you bear, the tougher you get. The more the difficulties, the pain, the challenges, the more tougher you get. Some people, the more they bend, the more the challenges, the difficult, they coil. And they say, I can't, I won't. No, please don't do that. And I've taught you as ego members, you know, that whatever the problem is, you say this problem is divinely outmatched. Whatever the problem is, whatever, the problem is here and God is here. And God overcomes. Because God has never filled humanity, regardless of where we are located, with daylight or night. So the problem is here, and God is here. Uh, God is here, and who wins? God. In the past, you didn't win because you didn't have the right mindset, but now you do. Try it, and let me see. So, Eagle Helen Mensa and Eagle Minimano Mensa, though our journey was very painful. Here we are. We gain strength, vitality, character, integrity, and mental stamina. We've also understood the universal laws and principles very well. We take this opportunity to thank God in particular for calling us and showing us a purpose in our life, a purpose in, in on, on this earth. Our hearts are grateful to the angelic kingdom, ascended masters, guides, teachers, and mentors who have guided and guarded our paths since we were born to discover ourselves, to fulfill our God-given path for humanity. We thank them indeed for their commitment and dedication to us on our spiritual journey. They never fail. Oh no, they never do. Always lead and guide and guard and direct and communicate with us all the time. We are not only happy, but very much happy as we continue to work with them. No matter how far we ran away or we didn't even want to do the work, they never stopped loving us to show us the way to do to, to the truth and life. It drew our mistakes, frustration, disappointment, difficulties, and emotional pain. They've guided us to awaken our personalities to the desires of our souls. Whatever book, song, quote, inspiration, and the right people we needed we, we was presented or revealed to us at the right time. And in some good way, we've been led and truly blessed and inspired by the works of many great souls on our spiritual journey. We specifically acknowledge and thank our great spiritual and spiritual teachers and our other professionals of our time. We found these great teachers on Oprah Winfrey Network or Oprah Winfrey Show and most of them on Super Soul Sunday. I listen to Super Soul Sunday all the time and I take my notes very well. It's indeed food for the soul. God richly bless Oprah Winfrey. The world will agree with me when I say she has served humanity very well for all these years. My husband, Igor Emmanuel Mensa, and I love her so much and dearly. Africa loves her so much and dearly. And the world loves her so much and dearly too. The universe adores her and loves her the best. She, she has truly served humanity and continued to do so in sincerity and in faithfulness. I bless her team and I bless her too and all those who surround her. I radiate peace, love and light to them all. And I salute the divinity in Oprah Winfrey. I am who I am today. And I'm the lady I was born to be, to, to, to be because of the, all the great souls that she interviewed. I'm not going to mention names, but I'm speaking my truth here. I'm the lady I am today and the lady I was born to be because of all the great souls she interviewed. Whenever I'm stuck or I'm looking for something, I Google and I find it and I get my answer. And I confirm all that has been said revealed to me or shared with me. On Sundays, I listen to it very well and I take my notes very well, even more in my homelessness. And when I don't get time to listen, when I came home, whenever I don't get time to listen, I listen to it during, uh, throughout the week. When I'm engaged in any activity, I put my earbuds on and I listen. As an African child growing up, I knew intuitively that there was something not right with our setup, but the religious and my traditions didn't allow me at all. I knew 
that there was something not right with her setup, but I couldn't pinpoint to it to put my thoughts together. My curiosity and determination to figure out things for myself got me into so much trouble, but that didn't stop me at all. When everybody would take the broad way, I would take the narrow way. Self-sufficiency and standing alone was my mantra as an African child growing up. I wasn't ready to give up at all. Self-sufficiency and standing alone was my mantra as an African child growing up. I had to be grateful to God that the door had been opened for the true African mental emancipation and spiritual awakening. It's a metaphysical truth that taught our things. Therefore, what thought has implanted in us, the same thought can approve. Can approve. For a very long time, we focus, dwelt on what we don't want. And what we don't want have created our realities. God does not do things for us or to us, but works through us. This is the time to learn about universal laws and principles. Let us flip the pain intelligently. Let the healing process begin from all that happened in the past to reprogram their subconscious mind to godly, constructive, and positive thinking. This way and no other way. When we do, God shall wipe away all the pain from the continent and in the diaspora. Let me read to you a collective prayer, the collective prayer of EMG. And God shall wipe away all the pain, suffering, and disappointment from the face of Africa and all the black communities in the diaspora. Through the collective efforts of all of us, there will be no more poverty, no more lack, no more wars, no more diseases, and no more underdevelopment, no more street violence, no more armed robberies, gun crime, drug culture in all black communities, both on the continent and in the diaspora. The former Africa and the former black race have passed away at the appearance of the new Africa and the new black race. We have now we now know the truth and we are all sorry ah, to take our rightful place in the universe. Every enlightened person knows everything is an inside job. Life is built from within to the without. The metaphysical saying, as we think, so without. As above, so below. As in heaven, so on earth. It's, a, it, 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 it's indeed true. So if you don't know this, then you don't understand life at all, my dear one listening to me. If you don't know this, then you don't understand life. Then you will think COVID-19 brought us bad luck, ill luck, doom, gloom. You keep on fighting with the world. And the more you fight with the world, you create more of what you don't want. We have to learn from all that is going on. So let us learn the lessons quickly. Otherwise, it will be more catastrophic. We have to learn from all that is going on. The whole curriculum of the third dimension is to learn lessons, lessons of love and light. And we, if we fulfill ourselves, then it becomes very catastrophic. So let us learn the lessons. Whatever you are going through, it is not to punish you. It is not to hurt you. It is not to harm you. I keep on emphasizing and stressing on that. Whatever. I know that the world is going through a lot of pain. But it is not to harm you. It is God's seeking expression. So learn the lessons quickly and you are free. But if you don't learn the lessons and you, you will keep on fighting with the world. And the more you fight with the world, the more you create more of what you don't want. Nobody argues with universal laws and principles. Two plus two is four in any developed part of this world. Also in Africa, everybody knows two plus two is four. So total obedience and compliance is the key. And our life is built from that. And many people don't know that. So just obey it and you are free. It's just as that, like the law that you have in your school or in an organization. If you obey the laws, you don't get into trouble. But if you don't, you get into trouble. That is how universal laws and principles are. Look, just go out in the night and look at nature. Just admire it. The trees, the moon, the sun. Look at how calm it is. You should learn how to bring calmness in your life if you don't have it. As I've always maintained, this is the most exciting time to be alive if an individual understands all that is going on. Nothing ever is. All is becoming. Life is not complicated, confused, and stressful, haphazard, or for the individual who wants to be in that right frame of mind to use the truth to discover him or herself at all. Be sincerely blessed and enlightened. By this topic, the divine law of oneness. 
in the course of the week we'll be talking about other universal laws but today we touch on divine law of oneness and the purpose for existence i am the co-founder of ego mentality group at emg we dedicate ourselves for the teaching and pro propagation of the subconscious mind we believe in the law of divine love uh, divine oneness thus we accept all and embrace all as already stated we also believe in diversity as diversity is the strength of a nation we accept both the rich and the poor the educated and the uneducated the downtrodden and the ordinary the have not the homeless everybody is invited this is eagle helen mensa i'm a child of god a citizen of the universe I wish you what to my people, sons and daughters of Africa and humanity at large. I wish you all that I wish for myself and all the blessings in the universe, such as joy in your soul. Have you experienced that? It's more than cloud nine. Maybe I would say cloud 30. Joy in your soul. Perfect peace that passes all understanding. Good health, abundance, and much more. God bless you and thank you kindly.